Welcome back to Morning Noon Tonight Show. I'm Karen Day. I'm here. Um, we're very pleased at Plum TV to have with us the Honorable C. L. Otter, the Governor of Idaho, and of course our very own Senator Clint Stennett today. They're here to talk about the state of emergency and you know, apocalypse now, ground zero, as we call it, here in Sun Valley. Thank you so much for coming today, gentlemen. Um, uh, we were, I went last night to the town meeting, the town hall meeting, and it was well attended. It was, and it was a big surprise to have you. I think people were impressed. They were, we were really, we feel honored that you are paying attention to us. Uh, Clint, uh, what's it like to have the governor hanging around all the time uh, <laughs> over I, your I shoulder? I think it's great. I mean, uh, the governor uh, really has come through on this, uh, this fire. was uh, not on the radar screen. We were having trouble getting assets here, uh, getting people here. By the time uh, the governor I was able to reach him on Tuesday, and we've been talking off and on about the state of the fire, but on Tuesday, this bureaucratic, I'm going to call it log jam or nightmare, whatever, it rose, and a couple of calls to the governor, and he made some calls to, to uh, Washington, D.C., and Senator Grapo's office, they broke through this thing, and, and now we have 1,200 people versus six, we have twice, twice as many people, twice as many assets, okay. as we did just four or five days ago. So, having the governor here is probably tremendous. Is, but he's taken a personal interest in this fire and it's been through his staff in here in town. He's been down visiting the firefighters. He brought his helicopter in and flew around the, the fire with the fire chief a few days ago. And it's been, you know, we couldn't have asked for more. So he buzzed, he buzzed the firefighters. We buzzed the fire. <laughs> Actually, uh, it, it was pretty difficult to see uh, uh, what we, I guess what we really wanted to see. You know, we wanted to be able to see which direction it was going and what kind of fuel was out in front of it. But uh, Jeannie had done such a tremendous job of briefing us before we took off that when we got up there, we actually I got to see in reality what she had showed us on the map, and, and it made a lot more sense. But uh, you know, I'd have to say that, that with uh, with the senators' calls, not only to me but to the rest of the uh, delegation, uh, they were very timely. I had been in a briefing uh, with the National Forester. Uh, with the National Firefight uh, folks in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, by telephone, and I had the Regional Forester from Salt Lake on the telephone, and then uh, the Boise National Forest, uh, uh, Forester right in my office. And we were looking at maps, and uh, quite frankly, we were looking at, at that time, uh, we were looking at the Yellow Pine Warren uh, complex, and uh, of course, uh, as you know, that's uh, pretty good size right now and it continued to grow. But it was about uh, 650,000 acres and of course we had some assets up there uh, on that. But it, uh, we, I, I guess it wasn't until Tuesday afternoon uh, with the Senator's calls and, and some of the additional information we got that people really didn't realize the urgency of right. Uh, you know, it's Castle Rock. Well, where's Castle Rock? You well, know, when yeah. Clint calls and says, you know what? My house is on fire. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that, that, but it got our attention. And uh, then we started, because we had folks calling in, you know, there were folks calling in and saying, hey, uh, what are you guys going to do for up here? And staff was taking the calls and saying, well, you know, the, those folks are fighting the fire up there. And, uh, if they had called us and asked us for any help, uh, we'd be more than happy to. Well, then the, then the calls started coming. But, uh, it's a lot different, you know, we were talking off camera a little bit about Tahoe. Uh, and I happened, to, uh, I happened to be in uh, Carson City meeting with Governor Gibbons uh, when the Tahoe fire was uh, going on. And uh, I would tell you that uh, we're very, very lucky here. Uh, with the team that we had, not that there was any deficiencies in talent, and ability, or assets on the Tahoe fire, but uh, they paid attention up here real quick uh, compared to uh, what happened in Tahoe. And as you know, several hundred homes lost, 200 homes. Uh, wow, over considerable, 200. considerable property value damage, and considerable dam damage not only to the environment, but watersheds, mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing that obviously really concerns us as well as structure and life. Right. Well, uh, you know, uh, you were talking about Jeannie and Joe, the two people that have come in on the strike the team. Jeannie and Joe show. The yeah. Jeannie and Joe show, they were so entertaining and most of all so informative. And that's the one thing about the fire. I think people in their valley, 
they don't realize that right now this white smoke is coming from this back burden, which is preventative. And, but you were talking about be, being able to go with Jeannie and Joe, and they explain to you what's going on. Could you kind of explain to the viewers a little bit, because you guys have seen it firsthand. Well, one of the things that I guess you have to assess, and Jeannie and Joe did that very well, is can they put the fire out? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, or is it better to manage the direction of the fire? Think of a great big herd of cattle in a stampede. I've done this. You're not going to stop them. <laughs> but if you can turn them and force that energy in a direction which will eventually spin itself out or force that energy in a direction where it can't hurt anyone. And I think that's where I think that's where they are now. And when we went up in the helicopter, uh, we saw where they put the suppressant lines on top of the rim so that they could burn right up to it and then it couldn't go anyplace else. Um, it, it, was, it was very informative, but to have, uh, to have Jeannie, I'll tell you, there's, there's a tremendous talent there in Jeannie and Joe. But so with 27 and 29 years com combined, you know, do the math, I'm math impaired, but that's a, that's a lot of years of fire. She was saying something very impressive though. She was saying that this is one of the first fires where she can ask for whatever she wants and get it. And they were talking about this committee. Well, I think that's the important thing that, that you know, having the governor weigh in on this as well as uh, Secretary Cable and, and the guys that did make the calls um, on our behalf um, upstream was the became the number one fire in the country. And all of a sudden she says, I can I get what I want. And that's what the governor says, well, get the assets you want, whatever you need, whatever you need to make sure you contain this fire and ultimately put it out. That's her goal too, not just to contain it, but she wants to put it out. And, and it's so impressive, not one structure lost. Right. You know, we're, so we're, lucky. we're giving a lot of credit to Jeannie and Joe, as well we should. Uh, but as I drove uh, down the fire line yesterday afternoon and then uh, last, or, uh, pardon me, uh, it was Thursday afternoon. And then uh, we came back out about 10 o'clock uh, Thursday night and uh, went up and down the fire line and I saw Middleton's fire truck there in Weezer. And I saw, you know, folks from all over the state of Idaho. Uh, the response, the community feeling, uh, you know, was built there. We're here to support you. We're here to help. What can we do? Uh, you know, you don't often find that in a lot of places. And I think that's one of the things that they really didn't find in, with the cross-border fire in Tahoe uh, was that there was some confusion. But uh, I just have to tell you how proud I am of, of not only the 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 valley community themselves with the entire state and their willingness to respond. You know, it was the, the uh, disaster declaration that, that Clint and I talked about uh, quite a little bit uh, earlier in the week that we could finally make it. I, I'm not in the habit of running over local government, <laughs> as you probably know. And, but as soon as the county commissioners got us the, the uh, declaration request, I mean, the ink wasn't dry on that thing before we had, we had ours printed up, we were just waiting to sign it. So as soon as the county asked for it, uh, we were prepared and we got it to them. And that's what, that's what allows all of these folks with, with all this equipment to cross, to cross jurisdictional lines. Uh, otherwise, there's liabilities involved and, and, uh, uh, and it can cause a lot of confusion as well. And who's in charge? You know, where do I go to, here I am, where do I go to surrender? Jeannie uh, and Joe were in charge. Well, that's that, precise. So, but that wouldn't necessarily be the case, except that we've created this command center, and now Jeannie and Joe, the our local fire chief, has let them be in charge of the asset all the way across the top. Now, now, Mike is still fighting with the right, protective the local, structures the local. and being prepared for that, but he's given the authority to those guys. The other thing the governor talks about, the disaster declaration has been great for us, is we were not able to, we, we would have had to absorb all this cost and would have basically broken the, the rural catch and fire department. It and might break D.C. at well, this point. <laughs> it's a million dollars a day right now. That's what we're spending. $650,000 one day in retardant. Right, exactly. I, it was so impressive. I was so glad it wasn't on our budget. <laughs> mm, exactly. Well, and that, that's what the disaster declaration is. It would give us a position to that. We have two dozen national guard troops in the government center to help with our local fire enforcement mm -hmm. and, and, and make sure the traffic enforcement is leave our local law enforcement from that, that, just that fight that they have to have to try and keep the county safe while protecting the inside of the fire line. And we, we thank everybody that's here. I want to thank you both for coming today, Governor, Governor Otter and also Clint Stennett, our senator. Thank you so much for being committed to our valley, helping us with this fire. We couldn't have done it without you.
We'll be right back on TV morning, noon, and night.